Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2018 here in Durban, South Africa, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Damush Mohammed, who is the Group CEO for Telesel Global. Damush, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank now, you. I'd like to start off by asking you a little bit about, uh, you've just uh, been participating in a session for, on MVNOs, the rise of MVNOs, uh, mobile virtual network operators. Perhaps you could tell us what, uh, what they are and, and what key role they play in today's ICT landscape. So, um, as you know, the um, MNOs, um, uh, they focus more on expanding their network and uh, expanding their subscribers' database. The MVNOs can play uh, a more focused role in uh, focusing on certain niches. Um, and this is where we find that, uh, uh, where we operate, for example, in Africa, MVNOs can play a very essential role in uh, targeting uh, niches uh, like the agricultural uh, communities, uh, uh, like uh, the uh, uh, banks and the bank customer communities uh, that can uh, um, enhance the uh, uh, services and the uh, uh, communication between customers. Let's demystify this for, for an audience that's uninitiated. What does MVNO mean? MVNO is um, a virtual network which is hosted by the mobile network. Uh, actually, in Telesel Global, we play both roles. Uh, we are MNO, for example, in Central Africa. We are the mobile operator in cent Central Africa. We are an MVNO in South Africa. So, as a, a mobile operator in Central Africa, we build the towers. We provide the connectivity to the customers. Uh, in South Africa, we are hosted over another mobile network. Uh, we uh, provide services to the uh, customer, but uh, we don't own the network. We just use the network of the existing mobile operators. So we rebrand uh, uh, the, the SIM cards, the recharge cards, and the bundles, the whole package that we offer for the customer. So what are the key trends that we should be looking out for? I think uh, the key trend now for, uh, for the MVNO is to uh, create their own communities. Um, uh, uh, I just gave an example on the agricultural community, for example. In, in Africa, we are talking about 65% uh, of the labor in, uh, in Africa are mainly uh, working in the agricultural uh, sec sector. So basically, if you are able to uh, target this community, bringing them the services that they need and uh, solving the concerns that they have, uh, definitely you will be able to attract them as an MVNO. As MNO, it's very hard to play this game uh, because this is more a, a focused niche which requires a certain type of flexibility and I think the MVNOs uh, should, should look at this trend. Another trend uh, is the cybersecurity trend. It's the trend of this year, especially after the new regulations. I believe MVNOs uh, can also play a very important role in the cybersecurity and approach customers from that perspective. And you just participating in this, this uh, session, the rise of the MVNO. So what's, uh, what are the things that might stop it from rising? What are the obstacles that might be in the way? I think the most important uh, factor um, is the regulations that are put in place. Um, there are countries where the regulations are perfect. Uh, in other countries, uh, regulations impose lots of uh, license fees, for example. Uh, MVNOs uh, uh, and the MVNO business case doesn't justify uh, paying a license fee, for example. In South Africa, you don't have a license fee to operate an MVNO. So uh, regulations definitely are very important. Uh, the second thing is the MNOs. Um, MNOs are putting, in some countries, they're putting some restrictions to receive new MVNOs. They still believe that MVNOs are competing with their business, knowing that MVNOs are MVNO subscribers are the subscribers of the mobile operator. So, uh, for example, here in South Africa, only one company provides the uh, MVNE MVNO services. Uh, in uh, the, the other two operators, once they have seen the, uh, uh, the great success that this operator is doing by increasing its number of subscri subscribers, they're definitely looking at this case and they're going to launch it soon. So I believe uh, all MNOs should take that direction in, in case they want to uh, uh, really find new revenue streams for, for themselves. Great. You invested some time in coming here to uh, 
Telecom World in Durban. I wanted to find out what's the value for you for, from attending an event such as this? Uh, the main value is um, uh, knowing the new ideas and sharing uh, some knowledge. Uh, people are coming from all over the world. Uh, there are concerns that are being raised. Um, there are topics that are being suggested by the ITU organization itself. Uh, for, uh, the agricultural topic is a very important topic. No one has paid attention to it. The ITU uh, uh, gave the opportunity for the participants to talk about it. And eventually, after small research, you find out that uh, this is a very important niche that uh, uh, none is looking at. Uh, with a very small research, even if you do a small research on Google, you will not find a direct link between mobile operators and the labor uh, who are working in agriculture. So, of course, we are talking about new topics here, uh, share of knowledge, um, and new concerns in the market, um, um, and uh, getting in touch with the, uh, with the regulators who are able to set the laws uh, which uh, can create the more flexibility for uh, businesses like MVNOs or the MNOs themselves. Well, it all sounds very exciting. Here's wishing you the best of the future, and thanks so much for joining us in the studio today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.